So next, let's work on the front door here. I'll rename it, get rid of that zero at the end. Let's create a prefab in the supermarket objects folder here. I'll create an animator for this object. So add a animator and then just like the fan creative on time controller, right click and then do create animator controller. I'll call it AC supermarket front door, drag the animator controller into the runtime animator controller for the object. Let's go to animation and we'll create two clips here. We'll have the idle where it's just a closed door and then we'll have the open animation where when some event triggers, the door will open. So I'm going to create and let's do anim supermarket front door open because that would be fine. Hit save and then I will uh, right click in here and create another animation. And then in the animation window over here, which by the way, if you don't have open, you can go to windows animation and open the animator and animation windows over here. I'm going to click on this drop down, create a new clip and I'll call it anim supermarket front door idle. Okay. And create that. So let's create those two animations. Uh, I'm going to set both of their samples to 10 for 10 frames per second. We go into where we have the art in this case, the supermarket folder over here, going to go to these front door animations. So the idle just needs frame zero. I'll pop that in there. So if I hit play, you can see nothing happens. And then the other one is going to need all of these frames. So I'm going to drag these in here, hit play. And you can see this is actually a little too much. So we need to separate this into two animations, one for opening and one for closing. So it's open here. So these frames I actually don't need in this animation. So I'll go to the start, hit play. And you can see it goes from closed to open. And we also don't want this animation to loop. So I'll turn so I'll turn that off in the objects folder in a minute. Let's create the anim closed animation. So anim supermarket front door close. And then let's get these last three frames. And that shouldn't be it because we need the frame zero as well. Set the samples to 10, line everything up and test it. Did we need three as well? Hold on, let me check and drag that in there. So frame three. Yeah, okay, we do need five frames for this animation. So just line up the, the uh, sprite frames. You can expand it down here if you want to see which frame is which. And there's our closing animation. Let's check to open one more time. So one, two, three. Okay, so that's there. Okay, now uh, objects folder supermarket. Take those animations, which are only supposed to trigger once. Click on them, go to the inspector, turn off loop time. Okay, so idle can be looping, I guess. It doesn't really matter, but turn it off for close and open. Okay, uh, now we'll need some sort of code to control this door. When is it going to open and when is it going to close? So let's set up some transitions here. We can go from idle to open and we can go from open to close. And we can also go from open to close and close to idle. So make those transitions. Uh, for each of them, for the one going to open, expand the settings, give it a transition duration of zero and turn off has exit time. We'll have to set a condition here for this to work in a minute uh, so that it can actually trigger going from idle to open. For now, let's go from open to close. In this case, we do want an exit time at 1.0. We want the open animation to fully occur before we go to the close animation but the transition should be instant, transition duration of zero. And we'll also need a condition here for it to go from open to close. And then from close to idle uh, should be automatic. So what you see has exit time at one, transition duration of zero. So that once it's closed, it'll just go back to idle. Okay, um, so in this case, since this is an electronic door, uh, how we can make it open is by having a player or any other object you want to trigger the door standing at some area right around here. So let's create a trigger zone so that the supermarket front door can open when our player walks on top of it. So I'm going to do add component and we're going to want a box collider 2D. So I'm going to also apply this to the prefab, click on the three dots, added component, apply to prefab front door. Let's actually just jump into the prefab in the hierarchy so that we can edit it directly. And let's set up this box collider. So if you hit edit, we want this to come below the front door. So I'm going to edit its top and bottom bounds to be right around here. 
And I'm also going to put it in is trigger mode. It's not used for collisions. It's just when the player walks onto it, we want to open the door. So now we need to make a script that just triggers when the player walks in here to change the animation to open the door and maybe move the player inside the supermarket or something like that. So now we just need a script that's going to use this box collider, check if the trigger happens where player walks in here, and then to open the door if that is the case. So I'm going to do add component. I'll do automated door as the script name, because there could be many doors in the game that work like this, not just the one in the supermarket. So I will create and add the script, edit script. Okay, first thing we need to get is the box collider 2D. And I will call this door trigger collider, make it public so that we can set it in the inspector. And then for this model behavior, we need to implement the on trigger enter 2D function. If it has a trigger collider, it'll be able to enter here. So we'll get access to the collider, which is the object that um, basically entered the 2D area. And then we can set a Boolean um, in the script and pass it on to the animator so that we can open and close the door. So Boolean, and I could call this something like door triggered to open equals false by default. So when the box collider gets triggered, we can check if the collider is of a certain type. There's many ways to do that. Uh, one is that we can look at the components on the player. So we can see here we have a player input. That could be a generic way of looking at uh, the player to verify that it is of a player type, since this would only be on a player. Or we can use a custom script, like I have this dynamic player controller. I think I will use the player input just to keep things as generic as possible. So let's see if there's a player input component on the colliding object. So I'll do collider.get component player input. And this type is actually coming from Unity input import system. Uh, so you would have to be using this movement method, which you can get in Windows package manager if you search for the import system. This basically replaces the default old uh, Unity input for controlling players. So if the player input is valid, then we can set the door triggered to open to true. Okay, now we need one more, which is in reverse. When the player leaves the door area, we want the door to shut. So we'll do void on trigger exit 2D with a 2D collider as the parameter, of course. And we'll do the same thing here. I'm just gonna copy paste. But if it's a player input that's leaving the trigger zone, then we wanna set it to false. And I'll also pass this on to the animator on the game object. So we'll need that up here. Let's do private animator animator. And uh, when the script starts, we can find it on the game object animator equals get component animator. Then just down here, we do animator dot set bool door triggered to open. We can do that twice. Oh, and we, we need to give it the name of the Boolean. So I'll call it the same thing door triggered to open. And you know what? That's kind of a long name. I'll call it trigger open. And let's uh, rename that everywhere. So down here, string trigger open, and then pass the Boolean trigger open onto the animator. And of course, make sure that everything is set to the same variable name here. I'm gonna actually remove this box collider reference because it shouldn't technically be necessary right now. Because whether we set it in the script or not, it's still gonna be able to trigger on trigger enter here. If for some reason this like, extra box colliders and they would conflict with each other. We can always break it into another child game object if we need to. But yeah, let's make sure that this is working on trigger enter on trigger exit. Everything should have the same variable name here matched with up here. And let's go ahead and hit play so we can come here and the door will open. And if we leave the trigger open gets turned off and it returns to close. And so we have open and close. So the only thing is that we also need to change the uh, starting animation to idle. It shouldn't open automatically when the game starts. So that's pretty easy. Just right click on entry and do set state machine default state to idle. Now, if we hit play, it should be working correctly. So we can open the door. We can leave to close the door. And that basically seems to be working correct now. 